you're officially leaving L.A. and moving to Indiana. And I was going to ask you why, but I know why, because people have gone nuts in L.A. I mean, you don't have to say yeah. it, but there's a reason there's a mass <laughs> exodus happening. Yeah, it's it's get, it's getting wild out here. It's getting pretty wild out here. And um, I don't California is not the California I've, I've known. It's definitely not the, the L.A. that I've known. The idea of living in a state or a place that's more surrounded by nature or uh, just with people that have um, certain values that lie align with your own. And uh, that's something that's really important to me. And it's not to say there's not people like that here, but it's crazy. I, I you know, I've lived in Hollywood all my life and right. I think I'm good. I'm good on that lifestyle. And, you know, maybe yeah. whoever comes out here and takes over this house will be more in line with what's going on in here. I don't think I'll ever live in a big city again. I mean, there, there, there's yeah. a certain level of breathing room that you get in a small town that you don't get in a big city. So, you know, the way you yeah. describe your outlook on this is that this is that's what you're going to get. No more lines, no more driving around for an hour to find a no billboards, spot. no, no, no traffic. No, you know, it's a trip. I used to be like a lot of people out here in California that or in, in big cities that they just assume that the middle of America is just filled with nobodies that are not educated and not refined. And, you know, they don't understand. And that's just like, it couldn't be more further from the truth. Like every, everyone that I've met out in small towns is like more, more worldly than most people that live in Hollywood. You know, they're yeah. uh, more educated in the sense that, you know, they know how to build a fucking house with their hands. And that yeah. to me is... <laughs> wildly attractive. And, yeah. um, you know, I, that's something I want to raise my kid around. Like if there was a real apocalypse to take place in LA, um, <laughs> I feel like most of my friends out here would just, all my guy friends would be like, ah, yeah. you know, it would Whereas be the over zombie there, it's apocalypse. Like, it would be yeah, the complete over there, zombie it's apocalypse. Like, literally like hold my beer. We got this, you know, yes. and I love that. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny that, you know, some of these bigger cities and people that live so far removed from nature, they, they, they have a lot of opinions about people that live closer to nature talking about middle America and the South. And okay. is it an interesting when you actually go there and you realize that whole perception is a farce. And meanwhile, those people who talk all that shit about those people, they rely yeah. on those people for everything. Oh, all the oh, farmers, no, and, all the people oh, building yeah, a house, they're the not truck in a finger, but yeah. yet they're putting them down yeah, as course. if they know better than them. This, that's why it's just insane. Yeah, to me. it is. And I'm, and I think, um, I, you know, I've been lucky enough to have been able to travel the country, uh, you know, on tour and stuff. And you see all different sides of, um, of the, of the country as well as the rest of the world. And I feel like there's a definitely like a lack of, um, gratitude as cliche yeah. as that sounds, you know, uh, like one thing that really bothers me is like this kind of anti-patriotism trend that's going around. Yeah. And I think, you know, like most things it comes with good intentions, but um, w w my personal take on all that stuff is that like, I'm a, I'm a fucking immigrant. You know, I came, I was born in Mexico and I came from a tiny pueblito where we didn't have electricity, running water. Um, my first house that I lived in was pr practically borderline a hut. Like we had dirt floors. Um, my uh, like if you look at my childhood photos, I'm running around barefoot, like on mud and we would take baths in literal buckets of water because we didn't have an actual bathtub. And, yeah. and it was a beautiful life too. I'm not knocking that as well, but here I feel like there's this, you know, when you talk about privilege, you know, like when I see people complain about the cer certain state of, of this country while they're, while they're typing on a thousand dollar cell phone. It's like, you don't, you don't know, you don't, you don't know what poverty looks like yeah. <laughs> real poverty, real struggling. Like I, there's not one day that passes me that I'm not so grateful for um, living in this country that allowed me to make a career out of doodling on people's skin. You know, it's like, yeah. um, sometimes I just want to yell at people like, man, like stop being a spoiled brat. You know, I think um, about this a lot too, Kat. I, I feel like it's a byproduct of, of how good it is in this country that we almost have spoiled we've created spoiled children that don't yeah. actually appreciate what they have i mean at this point if you took people's phones away they'd be begging they do anything to get their phone back kids you know what i mean like sure. they, they couldn't imagine growing up like you did or you know my great grandparents who were from italy they came over on a boat they didn't even know what the country looked like they couldn't read or write they had kids with them and they're just going to be like we'll yeah. figure it out and and you and yep. we arrive to the country and they're 
being spit on, called all kind. We weren't welcome yeah. in this country. But no. guess what? They they appreciate it more than people that grew up in this that grew up in this country, which is which is yeah. interesting. I mean, you you have more patriotic people coming from third world countries and living here versus people that grew up here who had a head start over those people and they don't have a damn good thing to say about the yeah, country. Yeah, I look yeah. at America almost as if it's like a business partner. It's like, look, it's not going to be easy, but we're going to give you the opportunity to do whatever you want to do, just like with you. I mean, you get to yeah. be an illustrator, a tattoo artist. I mean, all this all this great stuff that you couldn't do or prosper with in, in, in all kinds of Anywhere countries. Anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, not at this level, that's for sure. And I think, you know, now that I have a kid, one of my biggest concerns with my son, Leofar, is like, I don't want to raise him. Like, I, this is already going to be such a big challenge to... Um, to teach him and instill like the same values my parents did. Like it was, I think it's a lot easier when you're coming from nothing to, to have like a sense of value. Right. I think it's going to be more challenging to teach Leofar like, Hey, like this shit is not, is not to be expected. Like you live a life of luxury. Like this is, this is luxurious to have a beautiful house like this. And um, you know, that's something to, to work for. It's not handed down to you. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I think we're going to have a better chance of instilling those values into our son in um, a place that's not L.A. <laughs>